Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will show you the Android Studio Debugger tool which is important to understand and important to know. So watching this video can likely help you save a lot of time that you would otherwise spend debugging with maybe print line statements or so. Because in my opinion the debugger is not always the right tool to find bugs but in, it is a very underrated tool in my opinion because a lot of people don't know the full um, possibilities you actually have with the debugger. In this video, I will quickly show you all the options, or the important options at least, you can use to make your debugging life easier. So what I have prepared here is a little bubble sort algorithm, which we don't need to understand here. It's just to have something we can actually debug. So how does it now work to use Android Studio's debugger? On the one hand, we have this little debugging icon next to our run icon. So if you haven't used the debugger before, then this is the icon you want to use to actually launch that debugging mode of your app. However, just launching your app like that will do nothing. Because what you need to do is you need to set so-called breakpoints. A breakpoint is pretty much, well, <laughs> a breakpoint. So that is a point where the code execution will actually stop. So as soon as your app reaches that point in code, it will stop and you can yeah, just uh, inspect the current state of your app at that point. So let's just see how that would work if we go to line 25 and we click breakpoint. And you can of course do this with any kind of app. You don't need to write this code off. You can just open one of your apps and uh, just do the same as I do here. You set a breakpoint and at this point, if we launch the debugging mode, our program or the debugger will actually stop there and give us more information. Let's try that out by clicking this little debugging icon, waiting on it until it's installed. Um, launching that always takes a little bit longer than the normal mode. But now you can see, since we execute our bubble sort function here, we effectively reached our breakpoint and the code execution stops here. And you can also automatically see that this debugger tool window actually opened up. Let me make this a little bit bigger here. And we have a bunch of options here. So first of all, we have the stack trace here. So basically just all the function calls that your app made to actually reach that point. So currently we're in our bubble sort function, but that however was called in on create, which is here. And then on create is also called somewhere, not in our code, but actually in yeah, the Android frameworks code and so on and so forth. And then next we have this variables window here, which is a very important window. So here you will actually see all the active references to variables that are currently active in your code. So um, you can see, for example, this array variable that I declared here is actually yeah right in this variables window. And here you can perfectly inspect the single fields of that array, for example. And doing that with print line statements is, of course, a lot harder. Of course, with an array, you can print, uh, you can simply print that as well. But if you have more complex objects, this variables tab makes it a lot easier to actually inspect these. And then we have some important controls here, which are mostly these, which we can use to actually control our debugger. So the first icon here, is this step over. So that is what we use if we actually want to tell the debugger, please move to the next line. So we're currently here at this swap statement, uh, this swap variable. And if we click this button, it will simply move to the next line and execute the previous one. And you can see since that line was also now executed, we get the swap variable here in our variables tab and we can always directly see the value of that as well as just next to this variable. So we can now perfectly just click this button to move further line by line into our for loop here. And you can see we get more and more information. You can see now swap is actually false. We can see that in the variables tab, we can see what I currently has as a value. We can see the array, like the, the current state of the array, how we stored it here, for example. So that's a lot more information than you actually get with print line statements and here new tempor temporary variable and so on and so forth. What now actually is the next icon uh, for, which is called step into. Step into is used if you actually want to step into a function that is currently executed. We can see that here in this bubble sort function because we don't execute any other function in this bubble sort function. But if we actually set a breakpoint here, for example, where we actually execute the bubble sort function and relaunch our app using the debugging mode, 
then you can see the difference between step over and step into. If we wait a little moment. So if we now click step over, then it will either go to the next breakpoint if we have one, or it will go to the next line in uh, this function if we don't have a breakpoint. So if we actually remove this breakpoint and click step over, you can see what um, step over actually does here. So it will just jump to the next line. However, if we debug that again, and this time we use step into, since we're currently at this bubble sort function, step into will now step into this function. So if we want to inspect this function here, we click step into, and you can see now it jumps into that function without us actually setting a breakpoint here. Next to that step into icon, there's actually another step into icon, which is called force step into. The difference between these two step intos is that force step into will actually also step into functions of, for example, libraries you have. So if you have, uh, if, if this function would be coming from a library, not from your own code, then you could only step into that if you would use for step into. So there's a red one here. And to kind of revert stepping into something, we also have a step out of, or how is it called? Just step out. So if we are currently in bubble sort and we actually don't care about the execution of this function and we just want to resume here in our code at this hello world print line statement, then we can click step out and you can see we are back at our line here. We can then click step over to go to the next line and so on and so forth. Then the next icon is actually drop frame and that is not clear if you just read that description in my opinion. So I initially didn't know what that's for. So let's see what that actually does if we open the debugging mode again. And we are here at our bubble sort function where it's, get, where it's getting called. We step into that, for example, and in here we could be doing some things. Let's just step over a few lines here. So all these lines are actually executed. And if we now click drop frame, it will basically drop the current stack frame of that function. So it means it will drop all the local variables this function created and kind of destroy these and revert the state back to where this bubble sort function was called. So let's say you accidentally stepped over some lines too quickly and you missed some information, then you can use drop frame to kind of go over this again. So if we now click drop frame, it will jump back to bubble sort. And this is now different from step out because step out will just execute that bubble sort function and go on in your code above here. And drop frame will actually basically destroy all the variables, the local variables, the state of this function, and go back to this print line statement. So it can be executed again and you can inspect it again. And then we have one more icon in this category left and that is run to cursor. That's a very helpful one. So very often you just want to resume to a specific line in code, then you can just put the cursor to this line, let's say to this one, we click run to cursor and now it's actually, yeah, it reached the breakpoint, but if we click this again, um, here, run to cursor, yes, then it actually skips to that line. And the same way we have a very similar kind of icon, which doesn't run to the cursor, but to the next breakpoint. So if we now set a breakpoint here, then we can click this little green uh, resume program button, and then it will basically yeah, skip to the next breakpoint, which you can see works perfectly fine. And then we have some more icons here, like here you can just evaluate an expression, like if you want to calculate something or so. Um, here you can show your execution points basically. So if we click that and actually nothing happens. I actually don't know what that's for, never needed to use that. Um, here on the left, you can just stop debugging. That's pretty self-explanatory. You can view your breakpoints and then you will get a pop-up window with all your breakpoints. You can mute them. So if you want to skip the breakpoints, for example, and yeah, basically nothing special anymore. However, there's one more special thing that I want to show you. And that is the right tab here, which is called watches. And I think not many know about what you can actually do with these watches. So why is it called watches? Well, because you can pretty much watch a value when it changes. So you can see you get a lot of information here with the debugger itself, like swap that it's false, what I currently is, what temp currently is, uh, but there's still some information that the debugger doesn't show you by default. Like for example, what is in array i plus one. And that is what you can actually still find out with watches. 
And you can see I already have three of these which I declared before this video. Um, so for example, array.size. So we can easily see what the value of that currently is. If I just remove all of these, then I want to show you how we can actually add such a watch. And that is very easy actually. We just highlight what we want to watch. So the value basically array i plus one and we drag that into this window. There we go. Array i plus one is equal to four at this specific point in our code. And it should even also do that with full expressions. Let's find out. So we just take the whole if expression and you can see that evaluates to false. So yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to know about the debugger tool. I really recommend you try that out in your own project. If you actually encounter a bug to try and fix it with that, of course, in some scenarios, print line statements are faster. And I also like to use print line and log statements to debug things. But especially if you have a little bit more complex algorithms or you want to see in what is called in which order, the debugger will save you tons of time and print line statements can't really help you with that. So if you found this video helpful, let me know that down below. If you want to see the next video, check this one out and I'll wish you an amazing day. See you back in the next video. Bye bye.